Good morning students. Welcome to the video lecture session on apiculture. In the previous lectures we have discussed about uh, the different species of honeybees which is used for uh, apiculture. Then the different equipments used in apiary and also the various uh, general idea about apiary and in this section we will be discussing about the management and the maintenance of an apiary. Apiary is a location where a group of beehives are kept in an order to allow for the maximum food collection by bees and the site with abundance of nectar and uh, pollen plants within the one or the two kilometer radius is initially selected. So the apiary must be kept in an area where there is a plentiful supply of nectar or uh, and pollen plants in the closed in a, in a nearby area. And usually 50 to 100 beehives are kept in an apiary. They are placed in different rows and the distance between the adjacent rows is 3 to 6 meters and the beehives is a row of 2 to 3 meters apart. And management of the apiary is a key to success of beekeeping. In order to leave and produce the honey, bees need to be given a basic requirement such as the bee pastures, the water and the safe home for nesting. Most important is that for, in, for protecting the bees from the extreme weather conditions from the diseases and enemies and during the dirt period. Uh, the bees are to be managed carefully from season to season in order that the honey is harvested uh, in appropriate uh, quantities. And the bee colonies should be uh, prepared for the coming honey flow season also. So let's see one by one uh, which are the different uh, ways or the methods by which we can manage and maintain the uh, apiary. The first and the foremost thing that you have to be familiar with it is about the location of apiary. That is uh, about the location and apiary is the best suited uh, to be placed in a shady place which has an abundant nectar and the pollen plants in a radius of about 1.6 kilometers. The site should not be exposed to the strong winds and preferably be the flat with a gentle slope or the drainage of rainwater. And the marshy land should be avoided uh, and the areas where there is a water floods has to be avoided for uh, selection of a uh, phasing apiary. And the, uh, the site should be kept free from the black ants and the termites by undertaking the periodic uh, inspection or the campaigns against them. The hull should be placed on the stands to about uh, 23 to 30 centimeters high. The hive should face the east preferably because in the way that the bees may start their work the early in the morning and uh, the entrances are not exposed to the mid glazed sun. So these are the points that uh, should be kept in mind before placing an apiary. So once again, uh, so, uh, the place that we are going to place an apiary should contain uh, the nectar and the pollen plants within a radius of 1.6 kilometers, then the site should not be exposed to the strong winds and preferably the flat with a gentle slope drainage of rainwater. Marshy land areas or the flood of flooded areas should not be selected. Then the site should be kept free from, uh, from black and uh, black ants and the termites by undertaking periodic examination on by campaigns. Then uh, the hives should be placed above a stand of uh, about 23 to 50 centimeters height. The hive should face the east preferably because the bee may start their work early in the morning and entrances should not be exposed to uh, midday sun. So these are the points that have to be uh, kept in mind when we start an apiary or when we select a location to start an apiary. Next is about uh, the growth period. 
the period from october to january it is a growth period and at this period uh, during the, this period comes after the rainy season and there may be the different types of the grasses and the weeds and the bees usually prefer these wild plants rather than the garden plants the bees will collect the nectar and the pollen from these plants uh, and they feed their young larvae and during this time the combs of the brood chamber is renewed and the new combs are made that is during the growth period it is during this growth period the new uh, comb is made and uh, so the old and the worn out combs should be removed the empty frames should be placed in between the combs uh, one at a time and the bees will construct the construct the new combs on the empty frames uh, in a rapid rate during this period that is soon after the rainy season and the comb foundation sheets can be provided and uh, in the case of the newly constructed comb the queen will lay, they lay the large eggs and thus the population of the bees will increase rapid, rapidly uh, so in some uh, colonies at this time the spawning impulse will occur which is stimulated by the crowding of the brood chamber so the, as as many eggs are laid by the queen more and more brood chamber will be formed and more and more eggs will be laid by the queen at this time the spawning should not be allowed the spawning impulse has can be reduced by removing the one of the two brood combs and this can be given to the uh, weak bee colony so we can just uh, inspect the colony and uh, or the comb and then we can replace uh, the uh, this brood chamber frame uh, to any other bee hive which is having less number of bees and by november and the december months the bee colony is ready for the division and uh, when the number of the workers increases the more drones are there right? and the workers will make the queen cells which are the large cells projecting from the bottom of the comb uh, the new queen will emerge within 15 to 16 days and this queen can be used to divide the bee colony or to replace the old queens from the other hives Uh, so that's all about the growth period uh, so in short the growth period is a period when the number of uh, brood the uh, brood book colonies will be increasing or the brood chambers will be increasing the queen will be laying maximum number of uh, uh, eggs and the number of bees in the colony uh, gets increased at this period and it is during the uh, soon after the rainy season it happens the growth period happens the next is about uh, the dividing the colony about the dividing colony a bee colony can be divided before the emergence of a new queen and uh, keep the new bee box near the colony which is to be divided the colonies can be divided into uh, two or the three frames of bees and each uh, new bee is given a queen cell or the queen or the new queen this nucleus should be fed with 50% of sugar syrup the good method to increase the colonies is to before uh, the honey flow then the colonies are having the peak population and to make the bee uh, keeping successful it is better to use a small size frames in every bee box so that uh, when dividing a colony exchange of the frames are possible uh, so uh, it depends upon the type of uh, the frame that we are using and it is better to use a smaller type of the frame so immediately before uh, the rapid multiplication during the growth period you can just start dividing the colony next it is uh, uniting the two colonies next point to be discussed under the maintenance of uh, management of colony it is a uh, divide uh, uniting the two colonies the colonies to be united can be united uh you uh, know the which is meant to unite can be kept close together by moving the one meter each day so as to avoid the drifting of bees and when they are the next to each other the colonies can be easily united using the newspaper method in which the few small holes are punctured on the paper and placed over the brood chamber of the colony 
Now the blue chamber of the colony is placed over the first colony, which is now separated only by the punctured newspaper. The bead will gradually mingle together uh, by drawing the paper. So you just have to place the two colonies uh, and you have to bring the two colonies closer together and then uh, you can use a newspaper method. You can put a small small holes on newspaper and kept above the blue chamber and you just uh, allow the bees to mingle with. And uh, uh, next point, it is a replacing the old queen with the new queen. So the fifth point that has to be discussed under uh, the maintenance and the management of A3 is a replacement of the old queen with the new one. For replacing the old queens, select a young queen from a strong colony. Then the old queen should be removed one or the two days before the in, in, before introducing the new queen. And while introducing the new queen in a queenless colony, uh, it has to be caged for about the five to ten uh, caged with about five to ten attendant workers in a queen cage and is suspended in between the frames. And the queen should be released one day after. It is advised that the beekeeper should have some queens in the nucleus hives as reserved queens for replacing as and if needed. Without the queen in the colony, the colony will not exist. So always a beekeeper should the play uh, should be in uh, should be with uh, extra queens. Uh, and if he noticed there is uh, the queen is old and uh, a hive with uh, without a queen, then the hive has to be replaced by the new queen. So it's very important in A3. And the next, uh, uh, so before that, uh, it is better to change the queen every year because when the queen is young, she will be laying more fertilized egg for producing the workers. And each queen will be producing the more drawn eggs and the number of workers will be reduced. And this will affect, uh, adversely affect the strength of the colony. Uh, in colonies with a new queen, the tendency of the spawning will be the very slow or very low uh, in the honey flow season. And by January, the hives will be ready for the honey collection and the super chambers are provided uh, only during the honey flow season. And the next point is uh, to be discussed is about the bee pasturage. And the bee pasturage, the honey bees gather the nectar and the pollen from the plant as a food. And the nectar is a sweet secretion of the flora or the um, blossoms and the uh, uh, extra floral nectaries of the blossom in the raw material. So uh, that blossom, it is the, uh, the nectar from the blossom, it is a raw material for the honey and the pollen, it is a highly proteinaceous food for the bees. The plants that yield these two substances are collectively called as a bee pasturage. So what is bee pasturage? It is uh, the plants that su supplies more pollen and honey to the honeybees is called as a bee pasturage and the duration when a good number of plants have nectar to be foraged by the honeybees is called as a honey flow period and the days when there is no honey flow is called as a dirt period so there is a honey flow period and a dirt period honey flow period it will be there will be the plentiful supply of nectar by the plants whereas uh, the days with there is no honey flow is called as a dirt period. The fruit trees like uh, mango, papaya, sapota, cashew and the different varieties of uh, uh, ba uh, banana, uh, banana are uh, uh, excellent sources of the nectar and the pollen and the ornamental plants of, of the rose are also the excellent supply of pollen. The vegetable plants are the minor sources for the pollen and the plantation crops like tea, eucalyptus tea, coffee, rubber, cardamom, etc. are the good sources of pollen and nectar. Uh, so the availability of the pasture is of pasturage is of great importance for determining the honey yield of the bee colonies. And usually the honey flow period is during the period from January to April. Whereas the dirt period uh, is during the rainy season from May to September. Okay, so uh, the spawning management we will be discussing in the coming uh, video lecture and the monsoon management is also very important as uh, a country like uh, us has a severe monsoon season, a major care has to be taken during this period.
during the rain uh, the dry sugar should be given as artificial food 